as mayor of the city of Mount Vernon, I'd like to welcome everybody to the 2004 uh, KR gathering here in Mount Vernon, Illinois at the Mount Vernon Outland Airport. Uh, we're pleased to be the host of this event, and we certainly hope to be able to host this event uh, next year. Um, I think that the participants would agree we have a marvelous facility here, and hopefully our community has reached out and been accommodating and friendly to the participants. Uh, I would look forward to hosting this event again next year and trying to expand our participation as a community in that event. I showed him how you lift those up and then set it back down. I, that's why I recommend people do it before you fly. Do that and you sit you take off and land and take off and land. So you can control that. You can do that. You know if you get your wheels on the ground. Snow so quick, so hard. In fact, he signed, he signed the uh, road to uh, the go-kart uh, 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 You can buy it out, man. Just get on the road there. You ready to go? There's a song in there. <laughs>
We're going to take Taki for an airplane ride. He ain't been in a KR2 in how many years? Oh, since 80. Since 1980. <laughs> This is uh, a KR2, uh, N number 211 Lima Foxtrot. It's a KR2 modified. It's got a 24 inch stretch on the fuselage. All the other dimensions on the structure are basically stock KR2. The canopy is uh, totally different. It's uh, built in place. The, the fixed windshield is the uh, forward portion of a Pulsar canopy and the center uh, glass is out of a uh, KR bubble. Um, some of the other changes I've made to, the, uh, to this KR is it has wing tanks only, uh, no header tank. I have dual fuel pumps with a dual electrical system. Uh, empty weight on the airplane is a little bit heavy at 765 pounds. It has a Continental O200 with a Sturba prop. Uh, the, uh, the cruise I'm getting right now, I, I'm running a pretty good uh, size main gear on it. There's 606 main gear with a longer 30-inch uh, deal gear leg. So I've got a lot of drag hanging out there. Uh, but I cruise right now at uh, pretty much full throttle at about 2600 RPM. I'm getting 156 miles per hour. And I expect to get at least 10 and possibly 15 mile an hour more. So I'll be pushing 170 cruise. By the time uh, by the time that I get my wheel pants and all on there, uh, I like the way it handles. It's a very sporty air, a little airplane. It's uh, very nimble, flies great. I think it's it's sensitive on the controls. 
uh, but it's uh, it's a nice flying airplane, and it's got it's got good speed. Uh, the only thing, uh, one of the things I would change if I were building again, I'd probably make it a few inches wider in the cockpit area. Uh, but having taken 13 and a half years to build this one, I doubt if I'll have another one done anytime soon. So, uh, but it's um, I consider it to be worth the 13-year uh, effort, and they can certainly be built a lot faster than that. But uh, it's a great airplane for anyone uh, looking for a fast, inexpensive cross-country or just general fun airplane. These weigh 10 ounces for a pair. This was just a little heavier than that. But this whole, this axle bracket and the whole thing weighs 33 ounces, two pounds and an ounce. And this is the axle. And you'll have five strips of carbon fiber rod go on top of this. One on top and one on the bottom. The award to Parnike. A couple months, you know, on and off, starting and stopping. You can give yourself a week of time with us. We can put it together in a week or so and have your wing done, for example. Um, a lot of people we talk to say, yeah, that's a really neat idea. Because if I get my little breaks in my schedule and I start and I stop, I start and stop, and then I get to slow down and have to start over. And I've mean, never done this before. And I'm working right alongside with someone who has. It would be very beneficial. So it's really exciting. Some more hands-on type seminars scattered around over the country mm -hmm. because everybody can't can. drive 500 miles like I did to come up here. Right. right. Um, and well, where did you come from? Right? I came from Grenada, Mississippi. Okay. We don't have. We got a lot okay. of builders there. Most mm -hmm. of us. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, the KR has been my biggest help, having Mark Langford with all the stuff he's got on. Yeah, yeah. I'm still in a good shape where I can yeah, this, it without my This is of the technology that I understand from in the 70s. You know, I, I can hook up the ignition system on it. Yeah, it's a no, no, yeah, yeah. 65 Corvair. I understand it's all There's no dual plugs, a single plug for dual ignition. And once you read the manual, he shows you how... So this is basically the PVC valve type thing. Well, there's actually no PCB valve in it. Maybe that would help. But, uh, it would just cut some oil through the breather. So it needs more height right here, and I don't have it. Have you together. like thought of the first KR to fly the Atlantic or something? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if I do that, I'll put floats on it. That's the next thing. <laughs> right. I, don't, I don't know if anybody's done that yet. We finally got it. There's the auto flies with an auto plane. Yeah. 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 That's what you call a trust. Made him a nice feast. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he, well, it's a pretty long, I mean, he does yeah. a pretty long week. Yeah. Yeah, 
But yeah, but you notice that there's six fifty chalk wood in Yeah, I really yeah. like that. Well, but I always check it out around two thousand. This is November 455 Gillette Sierra. I have about 240 hours of flight time on this airplane and the tricycle retractable landing gear that I've worked up for it. Uh, it started out as Don Land's design and uh, had about 21 things wrong with it in the plans. And Butch Coppy used to make the newsletter and he said if I got that gear to work it would be mine, my design. But uh, it's sort of on the order of a Mooney Mike gear. I like it a lot because I get to see where I'm going when I'm taxiing and a lot of guys with the nose gear, you, you don't have to do the S-curves and all that weaving around stuff, but uh, it's got a 2180 engine in it I put together myself using parts from Steve Bennett and uh, SCAT Volkswagen Place and stuff like that. Uh, basic VFR instrumentation, radio, transponder, mode C, which aren't hooked up yet. Someday I'll get to them, just like the spinner. It's at home in the kitchen, so I hope to get it on maybe before I come next year, but I'm just glad to be able to get away from work and get here this year. Uh, Flies a little bit like a Cessna 150, but it's much more responsive. Uh, the flaps make it nice to get it slowed down a little bit when you're touching down and slows up the approach speed a little bit. Uh, it's got a little more aileron travel than some of the KRs. Uh, I gave it more than the plans called for because I've read about a few guys having a problem in crosswinds. I've actually landed in a 25 mile an hour crosswind, direct crosswind, and uh, it will do it. Uh, I didn't even feel it was that that touchy to do because it was a pretty steady crosswind. It made it easier to handle. If it was gusty, it would have probably been a different story. But uh, I really like the airplane. I've been to South Carolina, Rudoso, New Mexico. I've, I've departed airports at 8,500 feet density altitude with uh, full fuel and bags and a lot of stuff, tools, spare parts that I take on those big long trips. So 
I do a lot of traveling with it. It's my go see my children and family and friends machine. And uh, I just like the heck out of it. Uh, about the only flying at home is I fly out over to Lake Erie Islands and fly past a few friends' house, see if they come out and wave and things like that. But uh, when it's really it's time to get serious, I get in and I go three, four, five hundred miles or more. So it's a fun, fun airplane to travel in. that's below your line of sight. <laughs> you can't see anything. Off to uh, add the butter or add the back. Where did you see that? Ohio. Give a little show. You might be able to talk about the job in the South Lexington. It's uh, 260 miles if I drive it. I even wiped the belly up this morning. <laughs> Pretty good, huh? This is halfway clean. This is 41768. It's a KR2S with uh, Langford airfoils and uh, Langford uh, airfoil also on the elevator. Uh, purchased two years ago as a partially completed boat stage, which includes the fuselage and some of the spars were built from a gentleman in Michigan. Uh, since last September, basically finished it up from the boat stage. Um, it has a uh, 160 cubic inch uh, Corvair engine in it, rated at 110 horsepower, six cylinder engine. It uh, flies somewhere around 170 top speed, 150 slow cruise, 160 mid cruise, turning about 3600 RPM. Um, a little bit more cleanup work to do, we can get it flying faster. Um, it flies hands off, very stable, stable on pitch and trim. Um, due partially to the, uh, or mostly to the new wing design and the new incidences that they have available uh, from Mark Langford and uh, on the web. Um, has a Prince P-tip 5250 prop. Um, 
which we're testing for now, and it seems to have really good climb and very good um, uh, cruise numbers for it. Uh, max climb at sea level is close to 2,000 feet a minute. Um, with, we've had it up to 14,500 and still able to climb. So uh, ideas about turbocharging, uh, which are available now at this stage for the Corvair engine, are something that uh, we may not go with, just for simplicity's sake. Fuel burns uh, five and a half gallons an hour in cruise, uh, probably about six and a half, seven on climb out at full power. Um, I'm extremely happy, happy with the way it flies. I've had a KR2 with a Revmaster 2180 turbo in it, and this well outperforms it as far as stability and just the, the fun I have in flying it. Um, Fuel capacity on this airplane right now is close to 31, 32 gallons. I've got a 13 gallon header. It's made out of fiberglass as per the plans. The main wing tanks hold eight to nine gallons each and they are constructed of uh, PVC pipe. Uh, your standard sewer drain pipe with four inches in diameter, um, capped on the ends with fuel cell foam inside it to prevent sloshing. Um, as up to now, they've worked flawlessly and were very inexpensive and quick to install them to the wings and it could save builders a lot of build time uh, as far as building their wings. What it does, I built my cowling too tight, and the little bumps you see on it are all uh, paint, it's because it was too... They, they always try to get a, uh, a weird thing I'm doing. <laughs> well, you know, you stand up in front of... Would not take me flying, no. Take him off the list. Take him off the list. Make somebody else take an award home. <laughs> He yeah, was basically yeah. the secretary. Uh, you look at this, in say, this is in the 60s. That's a KR with friends. He was the secretary of the Jamaica. The regular one was probably a generator. That But I'm sure glad I got this electronic in there. Oh, it, it's just the, it's the best. I, think um, I, gave, I think I gave four. I don't think it's really Because there's not that mic. We don't have that mic. Well, it's just 46.
This is a 902 Golf KR2. It's a standard uh, KR2. Finished about a year ago. Uh, bought in Kentucky as a project. It is supposed to be nearly completed, but uh, it was, if you know anything about KR projects, that's, it was pretty rough, so we ended up taking it down to zero and, and rebuilding the entire airplane. It has the uh, Dan Deal uh, fixed gear. It's in a tail dragger configuration, as you can see. It, uh, it's pretty, pretty light. It's uh, between 610 and 620, which is a pretty good weight for a 2180 Volkswagen N to be pulling around. Our crew speed is about 160 uh, down low, turning about 3,400 RPMs. We like to sometimes turn it back to about 3,250 and cruise about 150, 153 miles an hour. Uh, pretty stock. It's got the stock Rand uh, canopy. Uh, things that I would change on the airplane is, is that canopy. Um, I think what I'd like to do is, is cut the whole top of the airplane off from the canopy forward. Uh, do a little more streamlining, do a lot of work on the cowling and the, and the induction. You can really get some speed there. Uh, kick the canopy out another six inches with a little better slope. Uh, kind of streamline things a bit. Uh, I have Richard Shirley's uh, wheel pants. Uh, he let me use his mold, so we went ahead and made, made wheel pants for that. Uh, made some custom uh, wheel, gear leg fairings, and the, of course the inside fairing has to be custom fit to the airplane. Um, Ed Sturba prop, it's got a 5450 prop, turning turns out pretty good. I can turn about 3600 RPM. Uh, I can turn 33 static, which is pretty good. Uh, not a lot as far as uh, avionics. I have an IPAC uh, Anywhere Map GPS com or GPS for it. I have the COM, which is just an ICA 23 uh, handheld, which is outstanding, more than I need, and uh, which has a, a nice input. I use light speed headsets, so it has a cell phone input and the, uh, the music for my iPod. Music is very important when you're flying. We're always fine tuning and fine tweaking. You can see on the bottom of the cowling, um, it looks pretty sleek now. Uh, we cut off uh, a good portion of it and, and just cleaned it up quite a bit. We uh, put a, a retractable cow flap and what we're doing, it picked us up about six miles an hour just by that one little modification. Uh, it took about a week and a half to do it and it cleaned up the appearance of the airplane, giving better speed. Um, pretty happy with the airplane. It flies like a little fighter plane. Uh, you can, you can do just about anything you want in it, you know, within reason. The only thing, cautions I'd tell you about the KR2, the standard, uh, before you fly one if you're building, I would say to move your, check your CG very well. Uh, don't, do not use the, uh, the published CG location. Do not use the, the two inches forward of the rear published location. Uh, I did fly it at that location with another passenger. It was very squirrely and it was almost un, uh, uncontrollable. Uh, if you can, center the range and forward is my recommendation to you. We had to push our engine forward, or, well, my engine, I say uh, we, because Rich Shirley helps me quite a bit. Uh, we pushed the engine forward three inches, uh, put the CG right on with, with he and I up in the airplane. It's 440 pounds, pilot and passenger. Uh, full, I only had fuel in the header tank, which is 12 gallons, and uh, flies wonderfully, not, not a problem at all. Uh, last annual, I added a seven gallon wing tank, uh, so it gives me about five hours of, of flying. Uh, I'm considering adding a new one next time, or in the other wing on the next annual, but we'll see how it goes. It's kind of a lot of fun flying, so I don't know if I want to necessarily t pull it down right now.
fingers are ready for the greatest distance flown. I do. Uh, you guys <laughs> both left from the same airport? We did. You did? Okay. We only have one trophy, but we will get you another one. So you will both end up with uh, greatest distance flown trophy. Okay, this is the best interior and the proud owner of 902 Golf, Steve Gilbert. Hey, hey. Best KR at the 2004 KR Gathering, 902 Golf, Steve Glover. Best firewall forward, we have the proud owner of 41768. Bill Clapp. Congratulations. Okay, the People's Choice Award for the 2004 KR Gathering. Bill Clapp. about 20 years ago I got some plans to be part of the show I picked the KR cause it was fast a year or less I'm gonna be done at last we're flyers we are flyers in a plane we hold so dear this is your part we are flyers we are flyers, the KR pilots are here, and the KR chorus up there. I just built the box bars, then the boat in the garage. Next came the vertical and horizontal staff. Murder and elevator went real fast. We're flyers, we are We are flyers, we are flyers, but they are pilots are here. And there's two other pilots that are here that haven't uh, jumped in yet. You guys got to get up there already, okay? They're the Florida pilots also. I got real motivated, built the wings, real excited with those aileron things. On the gear, making vroom vroom sound. Engine goes in and it goes round. We're flyers, we are flyers. In a way we hold so dear. We are flyers, we are flyers. The day our pilots are here. Right up there. This is the part I really like. I hate sanding, 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 and painting too, because it's just something you've got to do. Get that plane up in the air. You gotta go through it in despair. We're flyers. We are flyers. In a plane we hold so dear. We are flyers. We are flyers. But they are pilots of him. I took my 
my plane to the airport. Taxi tested more and more. I'm trying to get my nerve up for the very first flight. If I don't freak out, I'll be alright. We're flyers. We are flyers. In a plane we hold so dear. We are flyers. We are flyers. But they are pilots here. This part's true. Went to test fly my airplane. My wife was crying and so insane. She thought I'd die, but she was wrong. Looks so good, I wrote this song. We're flyers, we are flyers. In a plane we hold so dear. We are flyers, we are flyers. The day our pilots are here. Okay, it's one more to endure, okay? We all flew to Mount Vernon today. I got one more thing to say. I hope you're gonna finish your airplane. It's more fun than anything. We're flyers. We are flyers. In a plane we hold so dear. We are flyers. We are flyers. The day our pilots are here. Right there. This, this song is for you, Jim. <laughs> Larry's so serious that day. I love the guy anyway. <laughs> Came home from work one day and much to my surprise I tried to park Buick in a building twice its size And right there in the middle Set a giant stack of wood With foam and glue and fiberglass This wasn't looking good I like that better I got the explanation It was such a crazy thing my husband's gonna build a pair of eagle's wings. Now he's out there in the workshop and I'm all alone, it seems. There's a thousand more just like me that support their husband's dream. He thinks he is an eagle and he says someday he'll fly. I don't know how he does it. But I never wondered why My dinner conversations are of ailerons and things I think they're little flappy things that hang out on the wings Sometimes the kids get all confused from something daddy said No, daddy's not an eagle, daddy's flying in his head House is getting dusty now, he's sanding on those wings. He thinks I am an angel cause I tolerate such things. I just grin and bear it cause I know someday I'll win. I'll get my big old Buick back in that shit again. <laughs> Thinks he is an eagle and someday he will fly. A thousand more just like me that support their husband's dream. Thinks he is an eagle and I know I'll see him fly. I don't know how he does it and I've never wondered why. I know you've heard my story a thousand times before. I think I'll just end this little tale by saying one thing more. I'll answer with the question why I tolerate such things. What life is there for eagles if you clip their eagle wings? Now he 
was out there in the workshop and I'm all alone it seems There's a thousand more just like me that support their husband's dream Thinks he is an eagle and I know someday he'll fly I don't know how he does it, but I never wondered why I don't know how he does it, but I never understood why Okay, he really does, but it's not. So Larry, you're either going to kill me or else. But you know, I, I sang this song, and I think it's both, and Larry's so serious, but I'm not, okay? And I got to tell you, I know a couple wives in my life that wouldn't actually support their husbands that much. Okay? Like, <laughs> sorry, Larry. Wife came home from work one day and found this pile of wood. She thought that I was crazy. I'm never understood. She came right in the house and dropped the keys into that bin. You'll get that crap out out of my space before this night ends. <laughs> Out here in the doghouse and I'm all alone for real. She's inside making fun of me, setting up a no-flying pool. I plan to get this thing off the ground and I hope that it will fly. She knows that I am insane and just wonders why. She'll never know why I do it, she'll never understand why. But I've been telling her all these years, everybody else is helping them. <laughs> now she knows. Or at least now it's been confirmed. Her suspicion, suspicions have been confirmed. Anyway. And at this point, I would like to ask Jeanette uh, Rand to come up. And she has uh, a few comments that she would like to, to make here. I want to express my pleasure at being here. It's always fun to be back. It's just like the care of people are an extended family, and it's always a pleasure to see you. That little song was really interesting. It brought back a lot of memories. <laughs> my daughter Susan, who is here with me now, was two months old when that stack of wood got delivered in our driveway. <laughs> And I was really happy about it because I thought it was a patio cover. <laughs> and I didn't find out that it was going to be an airplane until the other guy's wife ran off with the engines. <laughs> but Susan grew up with that airplane all this time. And I'd leave her with her dad and I'd say, now, can you watch her while I go grocery shopping? And I'd come back and she'd be sitting in that airplane out in the garage where sanding and sanding. When she went to grade school, they had her write a little story, you know, kindergarten, her kindergarten teacher was married to a pilot who was a friend of Ken's. She said, the only kid in that whole room that wouldn't talk about anything but altimeters. <laughs> <laughs> At any rate, this is really a special time, and this is a special location for me because this is like coming home. I was born and raised in southern Illinois, and Ken and I met at SIU Carbondale. And so it's just kind of like a reunion again for me and have more of my cousins showing up and got to show up the airplanes. And I'm really, really proud of them. They're just gorgeous. And I have a few people I would like to thank too. First of all, Larry for doing all of the work here. <laughs> Jim for all that wonderful music that we all enjoy. Steve and Linda Bennett. Every once in a while I'll pick up the phone and I said, you know, I'd really like to know what's going on out there in the rest of the world. And I'll call up and I'll say, Linda, what's going on? Tell me. Clue me in. And she does. <laughs> and then I have a couple other guys that did a lot of nice things for me last year. One, Mark Langford. 
he called up and said, would you like some help with your web page? And I said, oh man, would I? So he's been helping me with the KR web page, flykr.com. And then Mark Jones helped with Ken Rand's plaque for the Memorial Wall. And I haven't gotten to see it yet, but I will. So, Mark, thank you so much. And I think that's enough for me for today. Anything else? Thanks for coming.